People often ask me what's the, the most special thing I've ever done in my career. Well, I'd have to say shooting the Mad Max movie was the best. It was such a great experience to be in Namibia for eight months, to go through a month or so of pre-production beforehand, being involved for two to three years prior to the start of the production part of the movie in sorting out the motorcycles, testing, developing, selecting riders for my team that went over as the specialist motorcycle crew. It certainly was my privilege to be the specialist motorcycle stunt coordinator in the Mad Max movie. I worked alongside Glenn Suter and Guy Norris, the really big people when it comes to stunt coordination, in just organising all the little bits and pieces that were involved, right down to the composition of the dirt, the jump angles, the positioning of the jumps, the design of where we'd come in, the surface of the ground in so many areas, the setup of the bikes, uh, did we need more suspension, less suspension? Did we need longer wheelbase, shorter wheelbase? Do we need the riders positioned differently? There's so many aspects involved in putting that movie together. It certainly was a privilege to be at that level. I not only got to coordinate the specialist motorcycle division, but I also got to ride all of the motorcycles in the movie. We had 42 bikes in total, but my favorite was this one. The bike started its life as a 2010 Yamaha R1. Then we did a whole lot of developments. At the back of the machine here, we did things like we added 22 inches of swing arm length to get a style of bike that was used in the desert and, and out on the dirt roads there in Mad Max. As you can see there's a big extension in the exhaust system to go back. The exhaust system was really designed conceptually for a look, not really for performance. But let's face it, 160 horsepower on the dirt, you don't need performance. It's, it's, there's plenty there, I can tell you. So with the back wheel, we went for a Continental Knobby because it was very wide in its profile and it suited the six inch rim of the R1. Also for the deep sand sections, um, Matt Bromley, the, the head mechanic, he designed the stainless steel scoop so he made it like a paddle tire and this sent an unbelievable roost up of sand when it was in action. So that was the back end of the bike. The suspension of course, because the length of the swing arm, the suspension was all, all, already revalved and stiffened in the spring of course. The linkage was, was uh, stiffened up because you get a lot of load through there with extra weight. We even jumped these bikes sometimes so we had to make sure that the linkage was very, very strong. We ran a Continental Nobby on the front. You can see we cut the Nobby so it steered better as a steer tire. And that ran with a standard rim. We didn't have to change too much. We just put the tire on the rim. We eliminated one of the discs because we didn't need two discs. There's plenty of stopping power on dirt. And probably one of the most interesting aspects is the skis so that in deep sand, when the front end ploughed into the deep sand, this will hold the bike up and not let it plough and then tuck under and put the rider down. And this was actually a Volvolini bike, which means the ladies who rode in the desert, that lived in the desert, this is what they rode. They conceived and made their bikes out of bits and pieces, and they were horse riders back in the day, but now they're on motorcycles. So there's a seat, a saddle actually, a horse saddle to sit on. And the pillion rider also sits here on another saddle. Moving forward, we had a, a very nice paint job to, that looked like it was the, the Volvolinis in the desert, their handcrafted little bit of insignia. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. There wasn't too much to change on the bike, but it was very, very functional and what a blast to ride. People say that a 500cc motocross bike has a lot of mumbo and it's special to ride. Well, I did 10 years of that in the professional circuit, but I think the most exciting thing to ride was this bike from the movie. Being an R1, 160 horsepower, on dirt, we had so much fun with this machine. It would drift and slide unbelievably. So as far as an exciting beast, this is it.